You're going to encounter a wide variety of melodies in your music production playthrough, so it's important to know how to identify them. In this video, I'm going to show you 10 types of melodies you should know about. First up, we have the trifecta. I consider this a melody that only uses three notes in the scale. And while I know most of you are thinking, congratulations, you've made the simplest melody, there's still room for error. So let's take a look at this example I've created. When analyzing melodies, you can generally break it down into three characteristics. The contour, the scale, and the range. The contour of this melody has an upward and downward motion and follows a very powerful rhythm called trisio. Notice how the shape changes slightly on the second half of the phrase. The scale is D minor and the half step at the beginning of the melody adds a lot of tension. The range is about eight semitones, so that's a medium range for a melody. Listen while I take the top note higher. It makes the scale less obvious and removes the tension. Does not sound as good. Lastly, sound selection is incredibly important when it comes to melodies. For this melody, I've chosen a bell sound from Pigments 3. Next up, we have the procrastinator. I consider this a melody that comes in just at the end of the measure or phrase. So it can be a good practice to fill that space with chords, bass line, or a counter melody. And one cool thing about this particular melody I've created here is that each time it comes in, it shows more of a complete picture. And for the sound selection, I've got this Super Jupiter preset from Pigments 3. It's a very smooth sound and it fits really nicely with this vibe. Next up, we've got the Pitch Bender. These melodies explore frequencies beyond the standard Western scale. In this specific example, I've got the MIDI notes descending down to E flat. And because I have Glide enabled within Pigments, the notes gradually shift pitches and give us that pitch bend effect. Listen to the melody when I take the glide time down. Now that you hear the abrupt changes in pitch, it kind of sounds rough. That's a sweet spot. Another approach to this is by programming a single MIDI note and then using automation or envelopes to create shapes in the pitch. Alas, the fountain of melodies. I consider this when three or more melodies overlap or interact with each other. Oftentimes they'll have identical or similar melodic shapes. For this particular example, I've got two descending arpeggios. One, an A major seventh, the second, a C sharp minor. Once you've created your bass shape, duplicate it across a few other instruments and stagger the entrances. This creates the nice cascading effect known as the fountain of melodies. Up next, we have the Keep It 90, as in these melodies are 90% chord arpeggios. Remember, an arpeggio is when you take each note of a chord and play it individually. Move some of those notes to passing tones in the scale, and then you have yourself a nice melody. In this example, we've got a C minor chord going down to a G major chord, and I've added the passing tones on the top notes therefore introducing a little variance and making it not 100% an arpeggio, hence keep it 90-ish. And for the sound selection, I've got this Clear Skies preset, which has this nice fluctuation in the pitch. 
It's very warm sounding. It's one of my favorite patches in there. Next is the slow cooker. I'd classify these as any melodies with long notes that generally last over four measures. In this example I created, the pad melody actually takes 32 measures to complete its idea. One thing that helps carry the energy forward is that this pad has a lot of movement in its sound. Since each melody note lasts over a few chord changes, you'll notice that the notes hone in on the second scale degree, the third, the fifth, and when we get to the sixth scale degree, it introduces a lot of tension. Ah, the theorist. These melodies will include passing tones and non-scale tones. They'll include modulations and grace notes. They could be potentially rhythmically complex. Think hard for your average person to sing. In this example, I've got a melody with a quintuplet feeling, so that's five notes per beat. Studio One is actually one of the only DAWs that I know of that has this type of grid. This melody also has some approach tones, which are generally half steps higher or lower than the main note. And for the sound selection, I actually chose the Mini V from Arturia's V collection to get a classic synth sound. the other end of the spectrum we have the anthem. These melodies have simpler rhythms and are generally constructed out of the major and minor pentatonic scales. In this example I created we've got a simple saw pluck carrying out a pentatonic based melody with only a little burst of complexity at the end. This melody is easy to hum or sing which again is crucial for an anthem type melody. Next up, we have the repeater. I classify this as any melody that repeats the same pitch several times before moving on to a new pitch. In this house beat, the melody and bass are playing the same melodic line down to G, each note repeating four times, which provides a nice driving energy. Finally, the last melody is the dynamic duo. To me, this is when a melody is accompanied by another voice in exact unison rhythm, which I know you might be like, hey, that's two part harmony. But the reason I chose to include this in the video is when you have two notes, you can treat either the top or bottom note as the lead melody. And most people's ears can pick up on this. But when you add in more notes, it starts to feel like a chord progression. For this specific example, there's nice movement on both the top and bottom voice. And there's generally about three to seven semitones distance between the voices. So those were 10 types of melodies that I think you should know. I thought it was both fun and challenging at the same time to try to categorize all these melodies. And I know there's a lot of types of melodies out there that I missed in this video. So if there was an 11th melody in this video, let us know what that name would be and what it's comprised of. Also, if you enjoyed any of the sounds in the video, remember Pigments 3 is now on Splice Rent to Own. I've also made a collection of all the drum sounds I used in these beats, 
and that will be in the description as well. Hopefully you enjoyed the video or gained at least a little inspiration. If you did, leave a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. We're releasing videos weekly. I hope you all stay inspired, stay creative. I'll see everyone next time. Later, y'all.